This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God Written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh In today's episode we continue unlearning the world with book 2 In chapter 7 this is section 4 part 5 Going deep with the early lessons last and final part It is a stepping stone to see that God did not create a meaningless world and my mind holds only what I think with God. The first thing is seeing that there are judgmental thoughts that seem to be in my mind and there seems to be something producing them thinking them up. but i am not that thinker nor the thoughts i am not the judgmental thoughts nor the thinker that produced them that would have to be the wrong mind was christ producing judgmental thoughts friend right did christ produce the ego david no friend if christ and god are one then nobody produced the ego and yet the ego seems to exist but does it and david that is the question it seems to but you have to look at it closely so as to see that it cannot friend How can something seem to exist and not exist? David. The key thing is going for the experience that negates all perception. To perceive oneself as a person in a world or in a room denies the fact of reality. Friend. I have a hard time with that. I understand the goal is to undo this but it certainly seems ludicrous to say the ego never happened while it seems to be happening that seems insane to me David Let's look at it this way The atonement is the awareness that the ego never happened The statement you are making is that The atonement seems ludicrous to you. That is the ego's point of view that the atonement is ludicrous. The atonement is simply the awareness that nothing happened. Friend, when you talk about it in that context, I can see how I am either on one side or the other. There is no transition period or anything. David It is not a future goal it just comes down to right now it is this or it is that friend which makes it clear why i have to leap i cannot slowly become enlightened david very good deduction friend I have to let go of one to grasp the other. And if I try to do both simultaneously, it feels like I am doing the splits. <laughs> I can see the need for being detached in my mind about what people think. As long as I am worried about what my mom's going to say, I cannot leap. David. I would not even say I cannot leap. You could say that if you are concerned about what your mom is going to think then you haven't left. We can leave the can't word out of it. It is not a matter of can or can't. It is a matter of have or haven't. The capability is not in question. The pain of not leaping will become intolerable. friend 
It is just the weirdest thing to be in this situation. Because I want to know what is going to, what it is going to be like before I do it. I want to know that it will be okay. And then I think, I do not really feel that I have a choice anyway. I feel like it is not up to me. The only thing I can resolve myself to do is keep hitting the books and coming to these sessions. I feel like I am making these adjustments in my lifestyle to a life that has a purpose. I am kind of seeing where it leads. But often I do not feel that I can just choose it. David It has to be an internal decision. You have to put your mind to it. Looking around for externals will not help. You cannot even use challenge as a motivator. Like to enjoy the challenge of it. Because the experience you are coming to is that there is nothing challenging about anything. Even that fades away, as it says in the teacher's manual. There is no challenge to a teacher of God. Manual for Teachers, Section 4 Friend, I have always wanted to get to know God, but I have always wanted that be something separate from me, some greater power that is not me. This idea that the Father and the Son are one seems frightening. I have ego ideas caught up with that. There is an idea of loneliness, of just being in the middle of time and space and all alone, like I'm going to wake up and realize that I'm really just this one person and I made up everything else. <sighs> that kind of oneness is very isolating and scary. The oneness that we are going for is not that, of course. It is very expansive and very inclusive, complete and full. David, you do not have to forgive the truth. Everyone who walks this world and believes that they are a private mind and a person in this world believes that they have to forgive the truth. They come to sessions with all these specific things, with grievances, irritations, annoyances and rage, etc. They believe that what seemed to happen really did happen. They believe that they have to forgive the truth, as if I really did lose my job, I really did get yelled at, I really did get walked on. I really did get mistreated and so on. And now, I have to forgive that. But that which they describe is an illusion. Forgiveness means to overlook. Forgiveness is for illusions. Overlook illusions. See illusions as illusions and look past them to what is real, to what is spirit. If you believe that you are a real person in a real world, in a real room, that simply denies the truth. That is why the person and the world and the room have to be overlooked and seen as false. See that it is all just a projection of thought. Meaningless thoughts produce a meaningless world. Where can there be a grievance if I see that it is a meaningless world that I made up? Who mistreated me? Who can I think of that ever mistreated me? Did I ever mistreat me? This I is just a projected image. The body is just a projected image too. What is forgiveness? It is seeing the false as false. It is nothing more than that. 
it is not seeing that there is something true and then overlooking it. It is just seeing it is false. Forgiveness is seeing that there is nothing causative in the world. Nothing ever got me to this point in the world. It is a common metaphor to think that everything I have ever done has gotten me to this point. Impossible. It is utterly ridiculous to think that the past has brought me to the present. Mind is causative and to believe that anything in the world causes anything is a denial of the fact that mind is causative. Forgiveness is the awareness that mind is causative. End of section.